Welcome everyone to another episode of the Campus Waterfowl Podcast. I'm your host, Derek Christians, and this weekend, all part of our Collegiate Waterfowl Tour, I am hanging out with students from Lake Superior State University. And uh, it's duck opener this weekend for Michigan's North Zone. Today's opener, actually, got, I flew in yesterday. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what happened today and then try to get a game plan for tomorrow. Before we get started, though, make sure you guys share this podcast with your friends. I greatly appreciate that. Also, if another thing I always tell students, please do not hesitate reaching out to me on Instagram, on Campus Waterfowl. If you guys are wanting to connect with other students on your campuses or have questions about gear or anything like that that we're using on the tour this year, um, yeah, feel free to me message me. I'll probably reply within, the, within an hour. So I'm pretty good about that. Um, also, it, all of this would not be possible without the support of Ducks Unlimited and some companies that um, have helped these students this weekend and that are going to be helping students throughout the whole Collegiate Waterfall Tour this year. Um, to mention, we got Tetra Hearing, uh, we got Ken Cartridge, and then also Onyx. So you guys are all well aware of those brands and they are here supporting all of you. So all the Collegiate Waterfallers out there across the country. So and supporting what we're, what we're doing, uh, sharing your stories uh, with your peers. So um, let's dive into it. So I'm sitting here with Avery, Alex, and Steven, and Brian. So it's, it's a challenge trying to remember all these names <laughs> week after week, every two weeks learning a new set of names. And, and uh, But no, I'm excited to be here. And uh, why don't we get started by just introducing yourself, uh, talk about kind of where you're from, and then also your major, kind of your freshman elevator pitch. Yeah. So I'm Avery Feldmeyer. I'm from uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, um, down in the Lower Peninsula, um, and I am a fisheries and wildlife major here at Lake State. I'm Alex Westfall. Um, I'm from Battle Creek, Michigan, the Serial City. Um, I am a criminal justice major with a concentration to be a conservation officer. I'm Steven Sitar. I'm also from Battle Creek, Michigan. Um, I'm a fisheries and wildlife management major with a conservation officer concentration. I'm Brian Hagman. I'm from Cary, Illinois, which is about an hour outside of Chicago, and I'm a fire science major up here at Lake State. Awesome. Good batch of, good batch of students here. And one thing I did not know, uh, mention is that all of these students are actually involved with their Ducks Unlimited chapter here on campus. So I think that's really cool to have them all here hunting together. Um, it just shows that by going to some of those meetings, you can have or make friends uh, that you'll hunt throughout college with and then probably hunt with even after college. But uh, it's, why don't we, I got a question for you guys. How how did you guys all meet? Was it through the DU chapter? Well, so to, I guess to start <laughs> off from like chronologically, Steven and I uh, are, are Eagle Scouts from the same Boy Scout troop. Okay. And uh, we grew up through that and through being in the outdoors and being exposed to the elements and whatnot through that. Um he chose to come up to Lake Superior State, and he really liked what was going on up here. And I kind of said, well, I've been wanting to follow the same path, slightly different route, but same path. And uh, so you know, I kind of followed his uh, his likings, and I came up here too. And and Steven knew these guys by the time I came up. So Yeah, um, so um, I met Steve, actually. I heard of Steve, like, from being up here, big hunter. Steve, you yeah, Steve's a big hunter. He kills a lot of ducks up here on campus. But uh, <laughs> no, uh, last fall, I really never turkey hunted. I always wanted to get into it. And uh, Steve's been coming to the DU meetings regularly. So did I. And uh, Steve goes, you want to come out with me on opener for turkey uh, this weekend? And I said, sure. Steve took me out. We spent the whole day in the woods together. And kind of formed a bond from there. Hung out a little bit. Yep. Went to Memphis. Yeah, went nope. to Memphis on a third term together. Time. Yep. Hey, Avery, how'd you come? Well, yeah, so uh, everybody tell us how they met Steve. So, um, <laughs> yeah, me and Steve uh, have had a lot of classes together, even from freshman year. So um, we just, especially last year, really hunted a lot together and kind of got together and did a lot of cool stuff, either um, hunting or fishing or, you know, stuff outdoors. And then um, from there, just kind of been hunting together and going to DU meetings and that kind of stuff. But it was really just classes and um, our fisheries and wildlife classes that started okay. kind of where we met. And then from Steve, I kind of met these guys through DU and through just hunting and being in the outdoors too. So, yeah. Not to mention, I can attribute a lot of my first hunting experiences to Steve and his family. Actually, 
my first time out duck and goose hunting was with Steve and his dad. Um, and even I, from what I remember, I think my first time small game hunting was actually with Steve and his dad. Really? Um, yeah, as far back as I can remember. Um, so, I mean, there's a lot of things. His dad taught me my hunter safety course. Um, there's a lot of things about the outdoors that, you know, Steve and his family have actually, like, I've just absorbed from them. So, mm -hmm. it's, it's uh, I mean, it's been, like, 13 years that we've known each other. Wow. So, yeah. Oh. There's a lot, a lot to learn in that amount of time, for sure. Yep. So I'm Steve, also known as Big Shooter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. So um, shot caller. <laughs> I I met all these guys. I mean, I met these two, uh, Avery and Brian, both at Lake State. Um, and I think it was just through common interests. I mean, we like to we like to hunt. Brian, as you mentioned, fire science. Avery, fisheries and wildlife. So we come from a little bit different backgrounds. Um, all from kind of different parts of the state and we just kind of clicked. Um, we all have a deep passion for duck hunting and conservation. So, yeah. um, yeah. Was it pretty easy? Yeah. Finding one another on campus. Cause camp, like it's, how big is Lake Superior State? Yeah. So Lake State's only about 2,200 students. So it's probably one of the smaller universities you've been to. Yeah. Um, we're pretty small, but, um, which creates a really tight knit community, especially yeah. at Lake State. So. Yeah. Um, even in classes, like just seeing a familiar face from like two similar, similar classes really like kind of gets you talking with those people and know, mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, we were in this class in that class. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. um, especially like with your CJ classes or with our fish and wildlife classes, or even with fire science classes, you're pretty much in the same classes with the same people yeah. for your, at least your last two years of, um, your junior and senior year. I know. Like and everybody's got weird gen eds that intermingle somehow in some way yeah. too. So yeah. it could have even just been an English class, but if it comes up once, like, Oh, Hey man, do you hunt? Yeah. yeah. And then bond started. Yeah. Let's go on from that. Yeah. Cool. What about, so from the short time I've been here, I've heard the, is it fish and fish and wildlife major? That's probably one of the bigger majors here. Or um, yep. Actually, before. So all of our majors um, are like really big here, okay. uh, coincidentally. <laughs> um, but yeah, fisheries and wildlife management is a super big deal uh, here at Lake State. There are a lot of um, a lot of employees through the Michigan DNR um, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife that are uh, Lake State alumni. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have an accredited um, MCOLS program, which is Michigan Coalition on Law Enforcement Standards, right? Yep. Um, and so that's where the criminal justice program comes in, and that's like top of the line uh fire science they were accredited last yep. i knew we are um, still accredited um big thing we do is we get everybody up here uh your michigan certs and we have a lot of canadian students being right here on the canadian border so we help those canadian students get other canadian certs and stuff to become firefighters and paramedics along with get a bachelor's degree in both uh well bachelor's degree in fire science or so the fire fighting and fire dynamics and an associate's degree in paramedicine and not to mention you all you have structural fire is a focus in that degree yes. and yep. you also have wildland fire which is a focus also in that degree you can take as a different yeah. path correct you can go off and work for all these different agencies as a you know different kinds of firefighters and this and that all over the country mm -hmm. so uh that's super interesting that like every single program has its own concentrations inside of it so one question i always like to ask is what has been the most like impactful or your most memorable class that you've taken during uh, during yeah. college probably one of my favorites was um, ornithology which is um, bird, basically bird class um, learning all about birds and like what their different behaviors are and then also like learning all the birds that are in the area and stuff mm -hmm. so um, that's actually taught by our DU advisor Dr. Garvon um, and so that that's, was that's the name I've been hearing a lot too yep. even from mm -hmm. employees that there's actually an alum at, that works at DU he he went to Lake Superior State and he knew of Dr. Gar what Garvon. 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 Yep. yep. So. Yeah. Um, he's Steve's advisor for his senior research project. Mm -hmm. Every student at Lake State has to do a senior research project. So um, that's another cool thing that Lake State does is um, it allows us to get some baseline research done. So then we can take that into our field um, that we're going to go into after college. So it kind of gets us a first step ahead of everybody else in our field just by having that first um, kind of research down by the time that you actually leave here and gets you you know some experience leading into careers and jobs mm -hmm. going forward mm -hmm. so yeah what about you alex what was your most memorable class i think uh 
you know, this is my, my third semester up here, so my experience is a little more limited uh, compared to these guys. Mm-hmm. What's, what's a class that you're looking forward to, though, that you've kind of heard? Um, criminalistics, okay. most definitely. Um, I'd say up to this point, the investigations mm-hmm. course taught by Aaron Westrick was a really, really inclusive course that had a lot of uh, great just content, and uh, it really, like, strung me along as uh, a person chasing an education. Mm-hmm. And he's a great educator himself. He's a good person, and he has a lot of experience in his field. It doesn't feel like you're just being taught by a book that's been written by a couple of people. It feels like you're being taught by a guy that's really and truly been through it all. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that was really, really a a good place for me to start, you know, coming up here from a community college was everything was so generic coming from something like that. And coming up here, it's so focus-based by people that have that experience. It's really, it's enlightening. Yeah. Um, I'm going to say for me, like, I can't really pinpoint any specific class. Uh, I would say if there were, if there were anything that I could say about my experience at Lake State and, um, it having an impact on me, definitely the professors, the faculty at Lake State unmatched, I would say, I mean, they're the Dr. Garvan, Dr. Dobeck, really all of them. They just, they go above and beyond to help you, um, no matter where you're at, what kind of student you are. Um, even if you're a Sometimes a part-time student <laughs> taking some time off to duck hunt. They're uh, they're always willing to help and and do their best to make sure that you learn. For sure, I know. Um, going off that, Steve, if you go to Lake State all four years and you graduate and you do not have one of your professors' personal phone numbers in your phone, you definitely did something wrong up here. You do uh, make a great connection with your professors up here. Mm-hmm. Like me personally, my favorite class up here has been my fire academy class. So you start out basically it's a year long class and you become a firefighter. I had seven people in my academy, seven other students. You basically lean on one of each other. You become super close with them. At the end of the year, you're going into a burning building with them for training. So it's a lot of fun. It's stressful, but you learn a lot from it. And you get really close with uh, our fire professor, uh, Professor Vaught. And you really get to know him. There's a lot of messing around that goes around on in that class. It's a ton of fun, but there's a lot of seriousness, too. Yeah, it's really cool because Lake State has, I think, one of the fewest professor to um, student ratios in Michigan. So you really do like get to build relationships with your professors, each and every one of them. And it's not like you're sitting there with 400 other people in your class getting all taught the same thing. It's really individualistic, um, between you and your professor. And so it makes it very nice to, um, be able to learn and ask questions and kind of be able to form that bond with them in order to learn more towards your field and towards your um, bachelor's degree. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know about you guys, but like in your fishery and wildlife, I know in like uh, fire science, we usually have about 15 to 20 people yeah. per yep. class. Yep. And that's, that's like the that's normal class ma- size. Yeah, that's, that's maximum usually yeah, too. About like 20 think, people is a maximum class uh, size. For especially once you get into your higher up classes, mm-hmm. you know, like then, and it's the same people for all of your fish classes, all of your wildlife classes, I'm sure for all your fire yeah. science classes and all your, um, you know, CJ Definitely. classes too. So, yeah. um, yeah, it's really cool to form bonds with those people as well as your professor. And it makes your experience a lot, a lot better here at Lake State. Next thing I want to talk about is the hunting in this area, the hunting and also just all the opportunities up here, just because you guys are located at the tip of the, the UP, like, Right on what the Saint Mary Saint Mary's, Saint Mary's River, Saint Mary's yep. River. Yep. Um, great, beautiful area, I, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys will be able to watch the YouTube videos and just get a sense of kind of the area these guys are able to live for four, live in for four years. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and take advantage of. But how have your experiences been out in the field? Out um, hunting or fishing? I got a good one to start off with this. I know I was talking to Stephen's dad in the boat today when we were out hunting. And he put it really plainly for me. A lot of people in Michigan grow up deer hunting. Almost everybody does. Mm -hmm. That's not an uncommon thing. There's probably more deer hunters than anything in the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. People come up to Lake State as a deer hunter and they leave a waterfall hunter. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because Mm -hmm. there is deer hunting in the UP, but it's so so. Nothing. Yeah. Decent at best. Yeah. Decent at best. Let's put it that way. The waterfall hunting is phenomenal at times. Yeah. Like, at times. Um, <laughs> yes, definitely at times. Um, like, I came up as a big deer hunter. Waterfall hunted eh, a little bit, not much. And I just got absolutely engrossed in waterfall hunting when I came up here. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, I grew up the same way, deer hunting with and turkey hunting, but then had never really had any waterfall experience and got into it my freshman year by only hunting, you know, once or twice. And then sophomore year was, you know, between a dozen to 20 times, but not anything crazy yet. And then really last year, all of us kind of got into it and really did a lot of hunting together. And yeah, so it, it um, is, is a different experience, but it's also a great area to learn in because we're kind of right in a pinch point for all these birds on the left we have lake spear and on the right we have lake huron so it's a really good pinch point for the flow of all these birds to come together mm -hmm. so um we do see a lot of influx in birds here and it's again like i've said this whole trip like it's a place that's not even close to anywhere else we have freighter movement which affects the ducks in a whole different way and then the influx of um of the river too just moving constantly it constantly affects how the birds are moving and which ways too so mm -hmm. it's totally different than anywhere else and you got a good variety of birds too you got and i know I've, I've been told this by you guys since i met you and met you guys at third term come down late october early november <laughs> yeah. just yep. because that's the time period. that's that's the time you, yeah. you need yep. to be here mm -hmm. um and yeah, I missed it. <laughs> Just because that's the that's a great time for everywhere, yeah, right? Yeah. I feel like. But um, explain what the hunting's like during that time of year. So, State. Well, can I can I say something on this really quick? Oh yeah, so, go ahead. Uh, last season was truly my first season as coming up, being uh, interested in duck hunting seriously, and really thanks to this guy, um, but. There's never, I don't think there's a better spot in Michigan to get into it, you know, because there is that ease of access. I mean, how many public boat launches are there within 10 miles? How much water is there to cover? How many species is there to learn about and chase? And how much availability just to experience more and more and more diversity? How many different just kinds of wildland habitat can you hunt in this area? I mean, I don't think that there is a better time or place in my life to like come up and learn this stuff and this area truly like brought it all and um you know as season goes on up here it does get so and so more wild right <laughs> you get to see different kinds of birds you get to see different kinds of movement you know they react differently to you being there they react differently to just freighters coming through like avery said you know mm -hmm. um everything seems to change and it's I'm learning a lot really fast um Today was my first opening <laughs> day, and uh, I think we'll get to touch on more of that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, going back to the question, why? What is, what is that time period like for us? So pretty much as soon as we get our divers, um, it's, it's crazy. Um, I mean, Thank it's... You. It's all gas, no breaks. Um, yeah. So Every morning. I think a big draw for us here in the eastern UP of Michigan, um, we have a lot of exotic sea ducks that you wouldn't see other places. We get scoters, we get long-tailed ducks. Um, you'll shoot you'll shoot a lot of golden eye, um, which I know they have. Those are pretty common. Um, a lot of we, bubblehead. We did get a barrels last year. Mm -hmm. um, so it, the variety is just, it's all over. Um, so I think that that's that's a big draw for me at least because I we're from we're all from downstate you're from out of state yeah. so um, I mean we're all aware that people pay big money to go shoot these species so yeah. it's like I know kind of going off that when you and me were down at third term we we're talking to other people from down south and stuff mm -hmm. we're telling them we shoot golden eyes we shoot buffalo heads we shoot bluebills we shoot uh, redheads we shoot long tails and they were just awestruck <laughs> yep. They were, they were just awestruck with that variety of ducks that we just didn't have wood ducks and mallards in the timber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's interesting because we do get to hunt those divers up here, but then we also have South Zone opener, which is in a couple of weeks, which we'll go down for and hunt again, mallards and wood yeah. ducks, like yep. a yeah. lot of other people do, you know, yeah. but then after that, we come right back up and then divers are right here. And so then we're out hunting Rocky points, killing as many divers as we can on different mornings so and i think that's good for college students too i think that's a big draw um with diver hunting at least because you don't always have to sit still and shut up you know um yeah, you can yeah. sit there you can joke around with your buddies and yeah. you'll still have divers coming into decoys pretty regularly yeah so and also uh i feel like diver hunting is more of a young man's sport 
a lot of work goes into shooting divers mm-hmm. versus that was my next question kind of yeah were you guys before you came to, to lake superior state did you guys all diver hunt beforehand or yeah, yeah except, nope. for, except for alex <laughs> alex was fairly new but what about so i did i didn't i wouldn't say i specifically targeted divers regularly um but i've i've duck hunted since i was 10 years old um legally uh and i mean that's when i could legally start hunting so that's when i started um and i haven't always targeted divers uh when i came up here it definitely magnified a little bit um and i would say that it's a big staple to my duck hunting now that's Mm. that makes the whole water following experience just so much better yeah so i know um, down in illinois there are we get the occasional diver but i didn't do a whole lot of waterfall hunting down in illinois um, but I really fell in love with diver hunting up here, especially, I can remember one hunt, especially it was about 14 degrees out. We had to bust through some ice and snow was coming in. Right at shooting light, we just had a flock of divers come in. Come out of nowhere, super fast, cupped up, and you just lay into them. It was awesome. Ever since then, I was just hooked into diver hunting. Yeah, we had a lot of crazy hunts last year. Me and Steve went out a couple times, and um, I know these guys went out a couple times, too, and it's crazy just how fast things can change. Like Mm -hmm. we were hunting one morning and we had seen trickles, you know, ones and twos come in and we, I think we only had three birds in our pile at the time. And then, you know, we're thinking, well, should we pack it up or should we stay out here a little bit longer? And then a freighter came through of course and kicked up all the buffalo heads in the area. And so we had a pack of what 50 Mm -hmm. buffalo heads come right into our spread, land feet down right in front of us and, we shot limited out in one volley yeah Yeah, one volley right there we shot nine stud drake buffalo heads Mm -hmm. and yeah that was the end of the day we packed it up and went home so we had another hunt last year where uh, it was kind of it was weird for me um because uh usually it's it's a rarity for me to get a, a bird mounted and avery and i had one hunt last year where we went out it was slow all morning we got to about nine o'clock in the morning and uh we just started cleaning up on all kinds of trophy birds. I mean, we got some great, great looking bluebills, golden eye. Um, he Avery shot an old squaw, long tailed duck that yeah. day. Um, so we, I mean, days like that, you are bagging up more birds to put in the freezer for the taxidermist than you are cleaning. So yeah. it's it's a weird feeling, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, that day was just crazy because we shot what four or five golden eyes that day mm-hmm. and that was more than we had ever shot in one day so mm-hmm. you know we had a couple onesies twosies that we shot a couple of hunts before that but we had nothing like what we had that day when we had five golden eyes and then on top of that a mounter blue bill that steve was going to take home a couple scoters that we had on that hunt too so mm-hmm. um yeah it was a hunt like that i had never experienced before mm-hmm. so i think that also like i think that makes the duck hunting uh, family here at Lake State, I think that's what really makes it. It gives it its its backbone is that no matter how experienced you are, um, like, I've, like I said, I've been duck hunting my whole life. Some of us just got into it last year, this year. So it's like there's, there's still something new for you to do no matter where you're at in your experience. There's still something new to try, you know. And I think people to meet and learn from them. One thing I ask, so after today's time um, – you guys want to explain what we did after? T- well, let's, let's talk first. Talk about today's hunt, um, and then I want to share with the audience kind of after that of what I've learned from asking. I have met some freshmen here at Lake Superior State, and I asked them a couple questions. But let's talk about the today's hunt. What all went down? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, not a lot. <laughs> so today's hunt actually started on uh, Friday. Wow. So Friday yes. night, um, yeah. Sault Ste. Marie, uh, great duck hunting, huge opener. A lot of people come up from downstate to hunt. So. When you're hunting state land, public land, spots are tight and people fight for our spot. So, uh, me, Alex, and Derek, we uh, we went out to the spot we wanted to hunt. We launched the boat, what, about 7, 7.30 last night? Yeah, you know? it was getting close to dark. <laughs> yeah, to get out to our spot. So, uh, we camped out there. Pretty good night. Had a fire, cooked some burgers, and then about 1 o'clock, the rain came. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the rain didn't stop until about don't forget about five the minutes between uh, <laughs> shooting light well i'll admit i woke up in my warm cozy bed and i i thought about you guys I was like, Man, <laughs> that really sucks hey steve yeah. oh yeah we'll be out there about four and brian I slept up. in a chair and <laughs> <laughs> here, just, hey, I'm gonna, I'm, i gotta fix the camera here 30 okay. minute limit here yeah. all right tell the story brian slept in the chair 
Derek slept on the ground most of the time. <laughs> so at one point, Derek was on the ground under my rain fly next to me as I'm in my hammock. <laughs> I kind of slept in a hammock. Kind of didn't. I fell asleep on the ground at one point. We're like trying to keep our gear dry. The wind is blowing in every direction, including up and down. <laughs> I mean, we're getting cold, even though it's like 55 degrees but with the wind and the wetness. Yeah. yeah. It's just bitter. It was and, damp. Uh, Finally, it was like the sea parted and the guys showed up, the rest of the squad, you know, yeah. our, our saviors. I remember I, I was kind of cold. I got a little wet last night. As soon as I saw them two show up, or the rest of the guys show up in the two boats last night, I went from cold to they're here. Let's start sending decoys. Let's get warm. Let's get <laughs> in the line. And once we started moving, it was, yeah, I felt way better. Yeah, but we got there, met up with the guys, and started getting decoys set because we got out there a little bit later than we wanted to if we're being yeah. honest. And, yep. um, we set about seven dozen uh, mallard decoys. Um, I think we had three or four mojos going this morning. Um, but the birds just really didn't cooperate for us after it got shooting light. We had one mallard buzz us like two minutes before shooting light as we're setting up the last decoys and getting shells and the gun once shooting light hit. And, um, and then right after that, we had another hen mallard come in um, Steve was the only one with Shot shells. From start. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> My gun wasn't even out of the case yet. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so we were, we were pretty uh, slow on time, but Steve knocked down a hen mallard right at shooting or right after shooting light for us, and um, and but we first really, shot of the day too. Yeah. Took a bird, first shot. It was that practice from yeah. That's right. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. were, yeah. We yeah. were spot on. Practice. Yeah, we definitely made up for it. And then yeah. following that up, we had uh, two wood ducks come in. Yeah. Yep. I know we all popped up, I think, yeah. four out of the five of us shot at it, um, yeah. and the wood ducks at the water fast. Yep. Yep. And they did it dirty, too. I yeah, mean, they, they came right, right in, chances. no hesitation, yep. so that shows what being prepared can do. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. The only the other funny bird that did it dirty for us is, uh, we had a McGander land in the spread. <laughs> yeah. We all pop up, you hear all the safeties click up. Quick off, everyone goes, it's a merganser, and everyone clicks the safety's back down. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to say, the only person that knew it was a merganser and didn't pull his gun up was the new guy. <laughs> but yeah, other than that, birds were real slow today. Um, this morning, we did not see nearly as many as in years past. I think that is from all of us, and mm -hmm. um and shots were very limited compared to years past too. We were a little bit farther away from everybody, but we still should have been hearing way more shots than yeah. where we normally hear on a north zone opener, which is usually like a war zone out there yeah. because there's so many yep. people coming up from downstate or from other places to come hunt over this way. So. And going off that, we have a big uh, DU group chat going with all the members and everyone who hunts. We always share pictures, uh, talk about spots to a point. Um, ask everyone how their hunt was going, and I think we had two groups who shot over four birds today in a single set. Yep. Yeah, and that was out of, what, probably six groups? All yeah. more than that, six, ten groups. Yeah. I think we had two groups that shot over four birds this morning. Yeah. Yep. So, so we, we didn't do too bad. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, we, it wasn't just us. It was a slow start across the North Zone this morning. Every bird that we wanted to shoot today that did us dirty, we uh, followed through with it. So, I mean, we didn't leave anything to be desired that was offered to us. Right. So um, I do have to stop you there. Uh, I have to expose Brian here. <laughs> Brian did give in to his temptation, and he shot at a common merganser. I did. I did. Forgot about that. I very much missed a common merganser. <laughs> had to call you out. That was a new gun. I wasn't used to the new gun. Okay, you just wanted to Once again, the new guy runs safely. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, after that today, we kind of um, brought everything in and got dried off for a little bit, and then um, we met up with all the people from DU today and got a group picture there um, up at school. That was cool to see everybody there with their boats and stuff from this morning. Um, some of the birds they shot. That was, um, yeah, cool to be around everybody. And then we headed out. Um, you guys were going to go salmon fishing, but yeah. it ended up into a, turning into an evening hunt. And yeah, due to some and, logistical errors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So at, at the point where we were going to go salmon fishing, we had a poll on Instagram. And yeah. what salmon fishing was in the lead at the it time. Was. And then we had some complications. And in a weird turn of events, by the time that it we was, ended up going hunting instead... The hunting pole had actually retaken the lead, so we yep. still satisfied you guys' wants and wishes uh, subconsciously. Yeah. Um, but uh, so I guess we can talk about our adventure today, <laughs> right, if you want to yes. call it that. 
<laughs> we, um, these guys were going back out on the water to try and go after some more birds. Can't blame them whatsoever. <laughs> but we had wanted to satisfy you guys' wants and needs and try and go after some pink salmon or even, you know, really anything coming off the powerhouse or anything coming through the river or anything, you know, just trying to satisfy some salmon fishing for you guys. And there's and a lot me, of... I, I, really, I was kind of really rooting for the salmon yeah. fishing. <laughs> <laughs> and there, there's a lot of different diverse ways to do it around here. There's, you know, so many different, you know, internal habitats for us to kind of try and fish for them. But uh, we had... Um, a, a vessel, uh, <laughs> my boat had been dropped off uh, to be worked on, and um, turns out that business is not open on Saturdays to pick up my boat. And so, um, in a weird turn of events, uh, we ended up taking Brian's uh, flat bottom out, and instead we went out, uh, tried to hunt a familiar body of water that wasn't too hard to get on, you know, trying to save some time and actually still be able to get on birds. And... Um, we sure saved a lot of time, <laughs> and we sure saw no birds. Well, no, no, um, we, did, we did see a flock of mergansers in oh, front of us. We saw yep, a flock of mergansers. I'm deeply yeah. apologetic for that one. Um, they're very important. Uh, and uh, we saw a lot of seagulls. Those were cool. Um, so in other words, we didn't see any cool ducks. We yeah. saw a freighter. That's cool. Um, yeah. And other than that, our, our, uh, our hunt was cold again. <laughs> and, and in short. In short, because... Um, we had this godlike wall cloud coming at us. <laughs> and we're like, hmm, we're in a small boat. And hmm, we're fishing on one of the most unpredictable waterways in this part of the country. So we decided to try and pick up what we have probably two dozen deep so. Dozen and a half, half boat. Yeah, we so we picked up and out. pulled the boat out. And by the time we were halfway across the bay, um, it was deluging. And uh, it was raining once again from every direction, up, down, and sideways. <laughs> And as we're about a hundred yards from the launch, this lightning bolt just <laughs> strikes Canada and it lights up the sky. And out loud I go, please God, we're a hundred yards from the launch, just let us make it back. And uh, we were wet. Yeah. I mean, it rained hard. We yeah, had, we got wet. It, yeah. Probably an inch and a half of water in the bottom of the boat yeah. by the time we made it back to the launch in just five minutes of rain. Yeah. So, um, But you guys were still out in the river on that. When the yep. storm came through. Yep, we were about six miles from uh, from the nearest boat launch, and we were going to tough it out. We heard the thunder. We were doing pretty good. Uh, Avery got a couple birds at that point. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, no, we, uh, we decided to make the smart logistical call, and we packed it up early. Sure enough, same thing happened. Uh, cleared up a little bit and then started raining again. So we're like, all right, well, we're good. We might as well leave. Um, but no, we had a great night. Um, so we actually got some, some secondary scouting done so we can, uh, we can get a game plan together and go out and hopefully get on some birds tomorrow. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. Tonight was fun. We saw a lot of birds flared a lot of birds, but kind of gave us a game plan, hopefully for tomorrow night, um, bringing everybody out and hopefully getting on quite a few birds that we should have shot tonight. Mm -hmm. Um, but, yeah, hopefully that'll be our game plan for tomorrow night. I don't really know what we have in store for tomorrow morning yet. We're going to kind of get a game plan together, hopefully, and uh, hopefully get on some birds for you guys. But no promises yeah. as it was slow this morning, and it sounds like for everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. If you guys are still listening uh, or watching the YouTube video of this live conversation, the video is posted on a Tuesday. The uh, following Tuesday, I get back. Uh, and then the first hunt from duck opener will probably be up like on Thursday, Thursday, Friday is usually when I want that first video up. And then, yeah, you guys will, you already kind of know what's happened, but now you'll be able to actually see it in the video. So, uh, be on the lookout for that on our YouTube channel. So, uh, one thing I want to, I want to rewind back to when we were taking the pictures with the chapter, the Lake Superior State chapter and, and the students that were there. Um, there was like a, there was a handful, a good handful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of people were taking their afternoon naps. Yeah, after early morning, morning nap. Happen. But um, because a lot of those people did stay out like we did. Yeah, yeah, a lot so of people. So a lot of people out. were really tired. You know, they mm -hmm. braved the same elements we did. So. Mm -hmm. uh, one question I asked when we were walking back was, uh, "Was is there any freshmen here?" <laughs> yep. And the reason I wanted to ask that was because, as I feel like for a freshman coming to this school, it would kind of be intimidating. But and I asked him that, like, was it intimidating coming to this college, like? knowing that you're going to be hunting water all the time and needing to get a boat. Like, it's, 
the two days I've been here now is just boats, boats, everything, boats and freighters and everything. You guys, you guys know everything about boats. Yeah. <laughs> Our school you, is decorated with boats. Yeah, too. You, yeah. you, you need Thank a boat guys. to hunt. It seems like to to uh, be a, if you want to be a waterfowler here. Um, and I, I asked them like, yeah, are you were you intimidated? And they're like, no, like they were just beyond excited to come up here and be a part of kind of the culture that you guys have been immersed in these last few years. Um, and he said, well. And I, I asked him, my follow-up question was, do you have a boat? <laughs> and he said, well, they, they ended up making one. He ended up making one. So, or like kind of put one together to, to use. Yeah. So um, I think if you're up for the challenge, like anything's, anything's possible up here, I think. And, and you learn along the way. And I don't know if that boat that he had freshman year will be the same boat he'll finish out here uh, when he's a senior. But uh I think, yeah, he's in for a wild ride. And, yeah. yeah, and going off that a little bit, Derek, um, every year as a DU chapter, we like to do a couple group hunts, and not all the freshmen have boats yeah. up here. Mm -hmm. And one of our big goals is get the freshmen in a boat with an upperclassman. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's walking spots where you guys can go hunt, but the hunting changes so much when you get out on the big water in a boat. Mm -hmm. yep. And I remember um, my freshman year, a couple uh, seniors took me out in a boat, and the hunting totally changed for me. Yeah. I don't know, if, uh, Steve, you had your boat up here freshman year or mm -hmm. not. Or uh, that happened with you guys. Someone else took you out in a boat when you guys are just hunting, walking mm -hmm. spots like nine mile or somewhere like yep. that. And the birds you see and the uh, hunting styles just change for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. Especially the diver hunting. Um, it's totally yeah. different. Like a boat changes your whole your whole day. Mm -hmm. um, makes spots way more um, ac accessible. And um, I only have a kayak personally, but that still gets me to a couple more spots than what. I would be just walking out my waders from either yep. one of the roads or something like that. So um, having any kind of watercraft really opens your, um, I guess, opens the area that you can hunt by quite a bit. So, mm -hmm. yeah. If I hadn't been, you know, getting so uh, quickly into it last year, I don't know if I would have bought the boat that I have um, now. I mean, I, I really, I, the boat that I bought now, I was like, I want to mix something that's I can capably uh fish out of this one of my biggest hobbies is i really am uh, big into fishing of mm -hmm. mostly bass and pike and a lot of panfish actually um but i also wanted something that was capable enough and structurally sound enough that i could go out in bigger water like here on the saint mary's we get some weather elements <laughs> that come through for sure and we get rollers on the river on the river when uh, certain winds come through and maybe even going out on superior in a small boat is I mean, that's something to be intimidated by. Um, and so that's, I, you know, if I hadn't have been into it up here, then I don't know if I would ever would have bought the boat that I have now. And I can't say it'll be the last boat that I'll buy either. You know, <laughs> there will be more boats in the future. <laughs> I think we can all say that. So, yeah. but um, I will say this, Derek. Uh, so being up here, um, we're obviously, we are on bigger water. We do focus most of our hunting around boats and being on the big water. And I think that like, that really does it for me. Um, I every, I know every, <laughs> every time every time I go to go out hunting in the morning, I just feel like I wanna I wanna be on a deadliest catch commercial. Uh, I wanna be playing some Bon Jovi on the way out. My name's Jeremy um, Wade. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of blood like pumping. deadliest catch, I know some guys that were hunting who are also part of the DU chapter. They called us like, "Hey, are your other guys out at the island right now? The wind's shifted in the shipping canal. The waves are nasty right now. Yep. Tell them get a hold of them if they're not out there right now." Wait as long as possible because until the wind dies down a little bit. Because they said they had a hard, hard time getting across the river this morning. Yeah, for sure. Yep, and that's that like reinforces our camaraderie here at Lake State because like yeah. I know I've I've warned people, complete strangers I've never talked to on campus. I've been like, yeah, I wouldn't go out here if you get a northwest wind. You know, um, I'd dump out of this boat launch instead of so and so. Right. Um, so I think that helps quite a bit, uh, and also people that you don't really talk to much. I mean, if they. I heard a story today, a couple of guys that were hunting across from us, um, their boat got beached and, um, just from the lake sash and had the boat stuck for hours and hours and a complete stranger, average show across the river came over and helped them get it undone. So, um, so yeah, definitely it helps to, to be friendly and to connect with the people out here on the river. Yeah. But also another thing is just weather is crazy ridiculous like it can shift very very quickly yeah, it's a dynamic be, environment 100%. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, like you guys know you watched how much time the wind shift last night when we were just sitting yeah. out on yep. the island tonight alone yep. it was dead calm when we left and when we were picking up decoys it felt like it was, a hurricane yeah it's crazy how 
how things can change very quickly on you. And those storms blew in incredibly fast too. We were sitting in blue skies and then all of a sudden now we have, you know, a big thunderstorm coming at us. So mm -hmm. um, it really changes very frequently here. And that's another thing, like Steve said, we got to be dynamic with it and um, especially be smart while you're out on the water. Can't, you know, attest to that enough that being smart on the water can really save your life many times. So. And the, the best way, I mean, really to learn about this stuff and learn to be safer and what can I do if this happens and where can I go if this happens and, you know, is the wealth of knowledge that you get really from the people that are closest around you, but also just the people you interact with in the community too. I mean, some of the things that I've, you know, learned have just been from strangers, just talking about fishing off. Around, some of the around here you're talking. Yeah, around yeah. here, really. Yeah. And just in this localized community in Sault Ste. Marie in general, even people that aren't from Sault Ste. Marie, but come up here on a regular basis to enjoy the same things that we do. You know, I talked to several guys when we were out pink salmon fishing last year that aren't from anywhere near here. I talked to a guy from Akron, Ohio. He said he comes up here once a year and his only purpose he comes here is to catch pink salmon. And it's one of his favorite things he does. And he was one of the first people to tell me, he's like, yeah, man. He's like, the best way to target fish in this area is to learn what everybody's doing and mirror it in a way that makes you unique and like mirror it and do something of your own that you're not just following everybody else. He's like, I go out in my boat. I see everybody's doing the same thing at the same lure. He's like, but what if, what if I try this? It's similar, but it's different, you know? And it's, it reflects back on the things that I already knew from things that I was comfortable with. I'm a very, I guess, seasoned bass fisherman for my age. And, uh, it's, it really is all about that. It's like taking what you know and applying it to the next situation. And so the people in the community around us, I mean, even just when I, my first week up here this semester, I had talked to a guy at a local, uh, marine supply store. I said, Hey man, I was like, just give me a little bit of knowledge that I can have for when I take my boat out for the first time. Like what, what are some things that I should know? He goes, Oh, well, he's like, if you're uh, if you're going to go out on the river and there's a South wind or a Southwest wind, he's like, that river will get some big rollers on it. He's like, it can be very dangerous. He's like, there are days where in my, I think he has a 23 foot boat. He's like, I just choose to not go out because I don't want to put myself in harm's way. He's like, I don't want to have to create danger for myself or somebody else. He's like, you got to be conscious about it. And that, if that hadn't come to me in that form, mm -hmm. absorbing that knowledge, how would I have known? It's all about keeping your eyes and your ears open to what people are doing around you, what people are saying around you. And I think that's really a good wealth of information that is lifelong lasting for sure. Mm -hmm. I think all of us can attest to that, that we've learned something from someone that we didn't even know. Oh, yeah. So, sure. I mean, probably on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. So, sure. um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's priceless. I don't even know what to talk about now. That was, that was <laughs> great. That was great. That was beautiful. <laughs> um, let's see. Well, if you, wait, were you saying someone see Oh, I was just going to ask him if he was tearing up a little bit. <laughs> Very, that was like a TED Talk moment. There. <laughs> Thank you for coming to TED Talk. Um, what do we got? If you guys are watching on YouTube, uh, we got a little plate of goodies here. Steve, is this a batch of... Yeah, so this cooking? is, this is uh, actually some homemade venison salami. Uh, my mom made it. Uh, it was a deer that I had shot, I believe. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, it's it's... I've grown up on it. Um, it's a great duck blind snack, deer blind snack, whatever you prefer. Um, it goes good with anything, uh, especially rain energy drinks. Yeah. <laughs> really anything with caffeine. Anything with caffeine. That. Are you sure um, this wasn't the raccoon in front of the house? It, <laughs> it might have been. No promises. Um, <laughs> all right. I'll taste I got same. a quick question. Because you said duck blind snack. What is everybody's go-to yeah. duck blind oh, snack? Oh, this is an You already know. Everybody, everybody knows, I, I yeah. can answer this question. Absolutely. <laughs> for everybody. everybody knows my favorite duck blind snack is Dots Pretzels. Yep. It always oh. has been. Favorite duck blind snack. And those um, were the blind this morning. They yeah. absolutely were. Have to be for opening morning. So. And they were gone. And yeah, yeah, gone by halfway through the hunt. So, yeah. I'm a complicated man. <laughs> I can't have one snack because you have different moods. I'm a dynamic person. So, Brian is going to agree with me on half of this answer in that honey buns. Oh. That's practically a godsend food right there. No. I think that those were created for the sole purpose of enjoyment by people like us. Now, there might be something wrong with us, and that's okay. And, <laughs> but that's a holy snack right there. And on the other half of things, Favorite blind snack or even favorite snack driving. I love me a good pack of David's sunflower seeds. Flavor? Dill pickle, okay. ranch, or the uh, they have the buffalo ranch one too. 
Thank you. Thank you. Whew. So good. See what you got. Well, uh, you guys already all know mine. Uh, nutritionally speaking and performance speaking, Cheez-Its. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong with them. A box a day them. keeps the doc away. <laughs> Three boxes a day. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, Cheez-Its, you can't go wrong with them. Um, and then, really, like I said, any form of caffeine. Uh, I typically stick with Rains or Bangs. Um, but, yeah, just something with a good... Good dose of 300 milligrams of caffeine, no <laughs> sugar, morning. no sugar, so it's it's healthy or something like that. Um, but yeah. yeah, no. If anybody knows Steve, you know that he loves his caffeine. Yep. Yep. There's, There's only one share. kind of rain that he today, likes, and it's not the one that comes from the How many cans of yeah. caffeine have you had you gotta, today? You got to tell the audience how many. So, <laughs> so he's keeping the company alive at this yeah. point. Yeah. So you, yeah. Sponsored I, athlete. I might own part of it now. Uh, so. Typically, um, on any given weekend where I'm duck hunting uh, in the morning and then going to the gym at night, or if I'm going to class during the day and then going to the gym, uh, typically, uh, it's usually about three rains, uh, which is 900 milligrams, if I'm really pushing myself. But um, yeah, so my theory is uh, you're, you're burning calories, you're staying in shape if you're awake, you know? Uh, so if you're, if you're awake, you're shooting some ducks. You're having a good time. Uh, you're out paddling your kayak, getting outside. You're uh, you're doing something good for yourself. So. It's like bump starting an old pickup truck. The heart, the heart just tries to die in the cabin. It's like, exactly. not today. <laughs> you're going. If, yep, you if just... Steve dies of a heart attack by the age of 25, I mean, I would not be surprised. We will bury him in the case of rain. That's yeah. right. Exactly. Please do. Yep. Please do. We're going to revive you. They'll be like, shh, with two cans of rain. <laughs> <laughs> Shock you. Smack them together. Yeah. But um, I would have to say, hands down, Besides honey buns, which are delicious, you always got to have your honey buns, frosted ones, or glazed ones when you're hunting. doesn't matter what kind of hunting I'm doing, and Steve can attest to this. He picked me up turkey hunting, stopped at the gas station, got my usual white can of monsters, and a bag of Hostess donuts. Yep. Yeah. White powdered donuts. Mm-hmm. And go Steve on, goes, man, those are so unhealthy, because you know, he's a big nutritional guy over here. <laughs> yeah. With all By all the end of the day, I have Steve yep. eating half a bag of Hostess donuts <laughs> every yep. time. Yeah. Yep. yep. It was more like a full bag, but yeah, yeah. we'll stick with a half Tried bag. Tried and true, right. though. Tried and true snack. I mean, really, I think I've eaten quite a few of them and all kinds of blinds. Yeah. Deer blinds, duck blinds. Absolutely. Most of the stones get you through, for sure. I will say, um, like Brian said, I try and eat healthy most of the time. Um, but I think I think hunting in general, um, just being outside and going through the elements, uh, I think that it's kind of an excuse to cheat a little bit. With your diet. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of a part part of the experience. Yep, right. yep. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So burn all that weight, kind of those decoys and stuff. Exactly. It's a trade off. Yep. yep. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Well, quote here from Sam Soholt: "Never go snackless." Is <laughs> yeah, the hashtag? So. Absolutely. Yeah, Everybody use that this fall. Great right. hashtag. We will. <laughs> I'm surprised that no one mentions beef jerky though. I, I gotta say, it used to be beef jerky. It used to be, but, but it's so yeah. expensive. It, it is. is expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Like petition, you your... lower the price of beef jerky. Yeah. 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 That's the petition. When I eat jerky out in the blind, it's either goose jerky, yeah, duck jerky, yeah. or like yeah. venison sausage. Something like that. It's not jacklings or maybe the occasional Slim Jim here and there, but it's never like jacklings or uh, the one that starts with no. I can never say the name. Old right. Trapper is a common one too. Yeah. yeah. That one. They can sell it in the gallery. Never that bag. stuff. It's always the homemade yeah. stuff like the goose yeah. jerky you guys made the night before when you go yeah. home with some crazy marinade con- concoction yeah. and you go, I don't know if this is going to kill me or taste delicious in the morning. We'll find out. <laughs> if you get a goose breast, like, yeah, you guys get Canada's up here, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, the goose pastrami. Oh, uh, out of meat eaters? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never tried it. That's been a t- hot one that I've been hearing about. Um, yeah. I'm and I don't a... know. The student, when I was in Montana last year, a student from uh, NDSU made, made one and brought it into the blind. And I don't know if it was that recipe or not, but... Yeah. I've it heard that it's darn, very, very. It good. was darn good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I think w- one of uh, one of the new things that I'll have to try this year, which I haven't tried yet, because I just got the meat eater book for Christmas. Um, but um, I have to try the duck nachos. Everybody has always told me how good the duck nachos are from the meat eater game hmm. book. So um, that'll be probably from the woodies tonight. I'll probably try and make up some duck nachos. So a good buddy of mine told me that you can cut goose. With, uh, with pork, and it makes really, really, really good sausage, mm-hmm. especially for making biscuits and gravy, actually. Ooh. So There you go. Yep. Big fan of that. Unpopular opinion. I'm pretty old school. Uh, I like to let mine soak in some salt water for a day or two and throw it in a fry pan and eat it just plain. 
No goose Jesus. breast? Yep, I love it. Everyone's like, oh, I don't what? like goose. I don't I'll do that. I also eat merganser in my free time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I know I do. I do love some grilled goose breast, fried goose breast. It's it's. I'm with Steve on that. I do like goose and duck breast p- mm-hmm. puddlers. I don't. Divers are a little tougher to get behind doing it that way. Yep. But I'm a big fan of black pepper Lowry's. Yep, mm-hmm. can't go wrong yep. with it. Is that what we used on the burgers last night, too? Yes. We threw some on the burgers last night. I don't know if you guys could taste it. Uh, I, I remember. They're really good, did. though. It was good stuff. Yeah. It's also a big power move if you guys, like, how you guys went out and cooked um, before hunting. It's a really big power move. You can establish your dominance and whatnot. If you go <laughs> out and you, you cook some duck before you duck hunt, you know? It, it, it puts you in the mood. It, yeah, it sets the sets the lighting and everything. I also know, you. guys, they'll shoot their first birds and they'll breast them out right in the boat. Save yep. purposes for ID purposes for the yep. DNR and mm-hmm. cook the breast right there in the boat. Yep. Another big power move is doing, like, eggs and bacon in the blind while you're duck hunting. Oh, yeah. I know totally. a lot of guys that do yeah. that, too. Just bring a little uh, Mr. or a buddy heater or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. And then, Just be careful with it. I yeah. do know guys who put their fast grass on fire. Yeah. Doing that. Yeah, for sure. Be careful with you know, unless you sit on the water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Next weekend, there was definitely a fire extinguisher mounted in the boat. <laughs> All right, another quick break for the camera. All right. All right, bye guys. I don't know, we're already getting close to an hour. It goes, yeah. back, it goes back quick. It Absolutely, does. yeah, for sure. Um, What about... Yeah, what other questions you got for us? What do you guys want to talk about? Is there anything? So... Yeah, no, I don't know where I was going. <laughs> One thing I want to say is that if if anyone up here is questioning whether you want to go off to a school or whether you want to go into a, a, a design program for something you're interested in, I think I'm the perfect example for maybe just take a foot out and step into it. And if, you know, if it's not something for you, then it's not something for you. But I was someone who went off to community college for a while. And I was like, you know, man, like, High school was hard for me. Community college wasn't fun for me. And uh, all thanks to this guy, you know, he's having a great time up here. And I was like, oh man, like I want a great time. At the same time, I was getting to balance it with, this is aiming towards what I want to do with my life, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, I made that, that jump out towards it. And so if, you know, if anybody in the audience is like, hey, like, should I go off and do it? I mean, hey, like, sometimes you just, got to take that foot out and take a step forward in a different direction and yep. maybe just look for what you want to do with your life you know uh some of you guys probably a lot of you guys are already in a you know on a path to what you want to be doing with your lives but um sometimes it's always just you know where should i go next mm-hmm. and uh i think that got a lot of us to where we are right now um some some of us takes a little longer than others uh you know being 23 as a junior in college is a, a weird feeling people are like oh what are you like you know 20 like <laughs> but uh you, you make it there you, you'll make it there at some point so um just figure out should put that out there for the guys out there that are maybe on the fence about some stuff so. mm-hmm. yeah you're a big tip talk guy tonight yeah full <laughs> sound or no sound yeah right? yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. i got a big mouth i gotta use it so. <laughs> yeah. but yeah i'd agree with that you, you no one else is gonna take that first step for yep. you so mm-hmm. and you never know where that that'll take you so right just ne- you never freaking <laughs> like yep. I, I, I my my story is i'm sitting here because of just that uh but i won't tell my entire story because it's kind of a long one <laughs> so, <laughs> but hours later. It's, it's, <laughs> it still amazes me that i'm able to do this and travel to colleges uh this year and uh for season three of the, the tour and uh, yeah, travel all across the country and, and meeting students like yourself, listening or watching, and then also sitting with the ones right here. So yeah, I think off of Derek's great. point, I think for all of us, it's also something that we're really like passionate about or yeah. interested in. Like mm-hmm. we didn't go into like accounting because we just wanted to like you know go be accountants and make a bunch of money doing yeah. that, or go do a business degree and just like make a bunch of money and then do hunting on the side or whatever. We went into degrees that we're very interested in and we might not make the most amount of money, but we'll at least enjoy what we're doing every day and be be happy with that. There so. are jobs that as one person will make a lot more money than all of us combined will make in a yeah. year. Yep. Yep. And it really doesn't take you that much to get there, but we're all doing it because that's what we're passionate about. 
yep. and that's what we want to chase in life. Yep. It's not about the dollars. This education that we have here is not just about the hunting and fishing either. Right. It's a sure it is like a plus. It's a yep. great great addition to our education, but and uh, you know for for all things considered, it's it's a great mix to have a great education basis and you know this this great mix of outdoor recreation. So oh, for sure. something that um, at least. Avery and I were told when we first came to Lake State um, as fisheries and wildlife students, uh, everyone comes here, they want to, they want to manage wild game, they want to manage wild animals, fish, um, and we learned that it's more about managing the people than it is the wildlife, you know, um, so I think that a lot of people come to schools that are similar to Lake State, um, big, big conservation-minded schools thinking that they're going to they just want to deal with animals, you know, they don't want to deal with people so much. And that was an eye opener for me. Like it is more about the people, you know, and through the people is how you manage the the wildlife. So right. I think that that really opened up my career path quite a bit. Um, it helps you interact with a lot of other people. It helps you like really draw connections with people that other, otherwise you wouldn't, you know? Absolutely. Um, so you guys can, you can see eye to eye with each other, you know, and like Avery said, we're all passionate about being outdoors, basically. I mean, Lake State's a huge outdoor school. That's what it's focused around. You, you will see more lifted pickup trucks, Jeeps, dirty, dirty off-road vehicles in the parking Wait, lot. Waiters hanging from yep. uh, railings. Like, yep. I know, yep. I've, seen, I've seen that in my short time Absolutely. here. We were yeah. telling you about the snowmobiles in the parking lot. Snowmobiles, and, yeah. Yeah, yep. they're in duck and gooses, and you walk by any dumpster on campus, there's always a pile of feathers next to you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So, yeah, no, it's a it's a unique area, that's for sure. Yeah. It's a Absolutely. special environment, I think, for yeah. all the outdoorsmen and mm-hmm. like women out there that are looking to – Potentially make a career doing conservation work or right or what was your major again? Fire, fire, fire. 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 <laughs> yeah, we have a little bit of everything though. You know, yeah. I mean, I'm criminal justice. We criminal have a, justice. a great nursing program, yeah. paramedic program. We have a lot of things. I mean, we have everything from just business to marketing. I mean, this is an all inclusive college. This isn't mm-hmm. just oh, we're all just hunting and fishing kids. This is really a place. A lot of different kinds of people come together, even for athletics too. I mean, our hockey, hockey team yeah, is a great yeah. hockey team impressive for our, just our student basis you know having 2300 kids and having three different levels of collegiate hockey inside of just that basis alone is yeah i think that's something to be said for mm-hmm. for sure people for come sure. together here for not just one purpose you know yeah, absolutely yeah. i think a big thing uh for me as president of our ducks unlimited chapter here is that getting getting people who may not have been previously involved with waterfowl hunting into it um especially the younger students the freshmen the female demographic because as we all know that's that's a a big movement right now and it should be right um a lot of people before coming to lake state never knew that they would find passion in going out and duck hunting you know and never never sparked interest with them but they come to our meetings they they talk to us you know just just being affiliated with lake lake state and uh, it, you really develop some lifelong friends. Um, and even just group hunts. Yeah. And people yeah. into that is like what we do, try and do two to three times a year is just try and get people out there so then they can at least take that first step and go from there. So. Even going off that today, I got a text from one of the females in the club, Bridget. She texted me, some guys took her out with her this morning on opening day and she shot her first big duck. She was like, mm-hmm. through the moon next day that she got to shoot her first duck today. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And that was all thanks to some guys in B who she was friends with beforehand. And they're like, oh yeah, come out with us. And especially an opener. I know a lot of people have their opening day traditions. Like, yep. I only want to hunt with these people in this spot. We do the same thing. I wear the same socks, eat the same honey bun. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> eat the same honey bun? I don't know the same one. Same you got to go to the same gas station, get the same snacks kind of thing. Yeah, but I think that really speaks for just like our DU club in general is just like you can ask anybody and I'm sure they'll be more than happy to take you out on, on a random day whenever you, both of you are free. And I think that's a test to, again, the community that's here at Lake State. Yeah, I know that's how I shot my first duck up here in the UP. Mm-hmm. It's one of the older DU members. He's like, hey, are you free? He's like, get your waiters. I got an extra gun for you. Let's let's go sit out for a little bit. And I shot my first mallard up here. Mm-hmm. And that's what, I mean, I've taken, I've taken quite a few people at Lake State out to shoot their first ducks, you know, um, and uh yeah one of them's here in this room uh but 
that that to me, as much as I love hunting with with my good friends, you guys, um, and my other friends, as much as I love hunting with my buddies, I definitely get something else out of taking other people out and letting them experience it for the first time. It's it's so much different. It's it's great for me. Like it's it's honestly fulfilling for me to see them find enjoyment in it. Oh yeah, especially like I've done it a couple times. I've taken some new hunters out. I'll be calling them. Ducks come in, like two pairs of something. There's two or three of them. They all pop up and shoot. I don't even put the gun up mm-hmm. because I know if those birds fall, those three shot them, and those are their first ducks they've ever shot. And the joy on their face, and it just gives you a feeling like I'm getting someone else into the sport. Not saying hunting is a dying sport, but it's on the decline. It is sure. on the decline. The more people we can get into it, and the younger generations, and do it properly, teaching people how to hunt the right way, ethically and stuff, that's huge. I was going to say, an ethical, healthy environment just just attracts so much more activity, really. Mm-hmm. And I think it all goes back to Derek's part of the whole Derek's mission statement, R3 mission statement of just trying to get new people and rejuvenate some of those people into hunting again or hunting for the first time and just bringing new people along and really getting them into the hunting industry and into the fishing industry and getting people outdoors so they can experience all the cool things that we get to experience on a daily to weekly basis so mm-hmm. and i i think so earlier we talked about how our hunting was really good sometimes and <laughs> kind of shoddy sometimes mm-hmm. um and i think i think what that does for us is it helps us realize that we're not going out there to shoot ducks that's not that's not why we duck hunt. i right. mean yeah it's it's a byproduct it's enjoyable we all love shooting ducks we all love harvesting um ducks and and eating them, um, getting getting a lot of enjoyment out of them, but it's it's definitely about yeah. being out there with your buddies, you know, Absolutely. spending yeah. time outside, even even if you're hunting alone. I mean, it's definitely it's it's larger than life. Yeah, sure. genuinely. I have some of the funniest and best memories of freezing your butts off with your friends. Like I know we went on a hunt, late season hunt. We didn't think there was gonna be ice on the lake. It got cold the night before, and we had to bust through three inches of ice. For a mile and a half to get to our hunting spot. That was miserable. <laughs> <laughs> Leaky waders busting through ice is awful. But looking back on it, that was some of the funniest memories we had. The jokes that came out of that hunt. Just to shoot five McAndrews, too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you have to. You have to. But, yeah, no, I mean, sometimes you'll be out there, and, and anybody who, who has been water following for any period of time knows this. Sometimes you'll be out there with your buddy or buddies, and, you'll just, you'll get slap happy. You know, you'll oh, be yeah. running on an hour of sleep and you'll be joking about the, you'll see a Tweety bird fly across the river and you'll just die laughing for no reason. <laughs> for you know, sure. You're, you're just that, that out of it. So yeah, no, that's, I think we all love that about duck hunting. Yeah, for sure. A lot of the relationships that are formed, I don't think would have come from anything else. Mm-hmm. So. It's a complex element. There's so much that goes into it. It's deep. There it really yeah. is. It's just past, past <laughs> the surface of just, being out there, it breaks a man down <laughs> to its core. <laughs> big TED Talk guy, yeah. Yeah. big TED Talk guy. Well, I think that's a good way to wrap up the podcast. We're kind of sure. we're getting close to about an hour and a quarter. Sweet. So, um, appreciate you, all you guys for tuning into the YouTube video if you're watching or listening to uh, the podcast. Thank you for listening. Make sure to share this podcast with your friends, family, anyone that you think that could benefit from this episode. There's a lot of great information here shared. Uh, Their thoughts on just waterfowl hunting and then also their experiences here at Lake Superior State that maybe you could apply if you're at, say, I'm going to throw in Ole Miss. I'm going to throw in Texas A&M. I'll throw in Cal Poly. (laughs) I'll throw in, let's go, another shout out. Which college on the East Coast? We'll go uh, Salisbury. So, and, and but... All the all of the things that we talked about can really be applied to to colleges all across the country. Absolutely. So um, thank you again. Make sure to subscribe to the to our uh, YouTube channel, Campus Waterfowl, to stay up to date on the Collegiate Waterfowl Tour. And uh, honestly, in a couple of weeks, I don't even know where I'm going to be at yet. So <laughs> I think I have I have a good idea, but honestly, I don't know. It's not quite all aligned yet. So, but we'll be somewhere uh, in this country killing some ducks or geese. So. Sweet. But thank you again, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day. There we go. There it is. Golden. Big TED Talk. Big TED Talk. Big TED Talk.